and D. tell you what I learned when I was a kid. When you start telling people that you believe in Jesus, they're going to ask questions. Some people are going to ask questions because they want to know. Some people are going to ask you questions because they're trying to trap you into saying something you shouldn't say or they think you shouldn't say. Some people can ask you questions just because they want to make fun of you. That's how it works. Some people are good. Some people are kind of mean. That's how it works. Now, <clears throat> back in the time that Jesus lived, there were a group of religious leaders. These were church leaders. Okay. Now I'm going to give I'm going to give a bonus of uh, 500 points. 500 points for anybody who can right now tell me what those religious leaders were called. Your hand went up first. No. No. No hands. No hands. Give another try. Prophets? Prophets? Bishops? Alright. Hey, oh, Penguin! Hey, we're going to start with William. E. <laughs> William, you get another turn. Hey. guess? No guess? I'd like to O? No, 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 no letters. I mean, I guess the word. I don't think it was random at all. It was 
Alexander. So I can go a half mile from this chair. Oh, look, I'm a half 
mile from that chair, it's still my property. I can go and a half mile from this chair, oh, still my property. To the point where in some neighborhoods, they have a string, a cable, a rope that everybody in the neighborhood owns. Everybody in the synagogue owns. And so they string it through the neighborhood. So as long as you stay within a half mile of the string, you're okay. Isn't that kind of trying to get around the law? No, you can't break the law. That's sin. But well, we're going to change the law so that you can do what you want anyway and not call it sin. That's what the Pharisees did. Pretty much. They were trying to bend the Word of God to fit their lifestyle. And a lot of people do that. They try to bend the Word of God to fit their lifestyle. That's not how we do. We bend our lifestyle to fit the Word of God. That's the right way to do it. Alright, so anyway, the Pharisees, though, they were the, they were the experts on the law. And so everybody listened to what the Pharisees said. And here comes Jesus, and Jesus is saying, hey, what you guys are doing is corrupt. You guys are not following the Word of God. You are trying to bend the Word of God to fit your lifestyle. You're trying to bend the Word of God to please you. It should be the other way around, that we please God. And so they got mad at him. They didn't like that. How dare he try to make the rules? How dare he define who the rules are? He didn't go to Pharisee school. He's not a Pharisee. What right does he have? What they didn't realize is that he was the son of God. And when he would try to tell people that, you know, he would tell people, I and the Father are one. How dare you? How dare you say that you are the Father? that you are the Son of God. And they got all mad at him. So the Pharisees did not like Jesus. They didn't like it because Jesus, you know what it means to upset the apple cart? Anybody ever heard that phrase, upset the apple cart? Nope. Kaylee, you're smiling like you've heard it. <laughs> when somebody's got something going and it's really working good for them and somebody comes along and disrupts that, that's called upsetting the apple cart. That's what Jesus did. They had this thing going where everybody was listening to what they said. Even with that what they said was wrong, everybody was still listening to them. Everybody was counting them as an expert, even if they were wrong. They got great respect from everybody, even if they were wrong. You're not old enough to have a mustache. Even if they're wrong. And Jesus came along and said, I'm not going to respect that. You guys are wrong. Now, if you want to make an enemy of people, all you have to do is tell them they're wrong. People don't like to hear that. People don't like to hear that they're wrong. And Jesus is saying, you guys are not obeying the scriptures. So they tried to do everything in their power to try to frustrate Jesus and try to stop him from, uh, from getting the word out to people. So they came to, you know what, how do we, well first of all they, they came to Jesus and they said, where do you get the right to do this stuff that you're doing? Where do you get your authority? Where, where, where do you get the authority to comment on Scripture? Where do you get the, the authority to tell people what the Word of God means? And you're going to have people that say that to you. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are telling me what the Bible says? How do you know what the Bible says? You know how you know what the Bible says? You read it. You gotta read it. You gotta read it. You gotta read it. 
You got to study it. You got to know what the Bible says. Unless you read it, you never know what the Bible says. Now, if you're telling people right and wrong, and what you're telling them is not in the Bible, then you're telling them wrong. <coughs> what we tell people has to be from the Bible. So they said to Jesus, "Where do you get your authority from? What gives you the right to say these things?" And Jesus says, "You know what?" I'm going to ask you a question. And then I'll answer your question. Okay. All right. The baptism from John. Now John, John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist was another guy. He did not go to the Pharisee school. And yet everybody considered him a prophet. Everybody considered John the Baptist a prophet. And so he said, the baptism of John, did it come from man or did it come from God? Well, they got together. Hmm. Well, you see, if we say from, from God, then he's going to say, why didn't you believe? See, they didn't believe what John was preaching. They didn't like John either. And they tried to do everything to destroy him too. And finally, it got so that the uh, uh, one of the kings cut John's head off just to please his daughter. And he said, the baptism of John, did that come from God or did that come from man? They said, well, let's see. If we say from God, he's going to say, why didn't you believe it? But if we say that the baptism of John is from man, well, we can't say that because everybody thought that John the Baptist was a prophet. And if we say that his that his uh, his baptism was not of God, the people are going to get mad at us and they're going to turn on us. Never, ever consider other people's opinions. When you're deciding what's right and what's wrong, never consider other people's opinions. Their opinions don't count. God's counts. See, the Pharisees were trying to satisfy the people, not satisfy God. And so they would they didn't want to say that his baptism was from God because Jesus would bust them on it. Say, you don't believe it. But they didn't want to say it was man either because that would be unpopular. And I'll tell you something right now. You're going to get that a lot in school. We did when I was in school, and I've seen it increase so much more now that people make decisions on right and wrong based on what everybody else thinks. And that's wrong. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. It matters. What matters is what does the Word of God say? This is what decides what's right and wrong. All right, so... So they got done talking among each other and they came back to Jesus and said, well, we don't know. We can't tell. And Jesus said, okay, I'm not going to tell you either. I'm not going to tell you what authority, by what authority I do these things either. Oh, they got so mad at him. They got so mad at him. So then they were, they were trying to trap him. Ah, let's see, how, we can, how can we trap Jesus? I know. Money, 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 money. Now, the leader of the leader of Judea, where Jerusalem was, was not a Jewish man. He was a Roman, because the Romans controlled everything. How many of you have ever heard of the Romans? And I don't mean Roman Pena. Okay? Kaylee, you're probably well, you and Absolutely. you and Eric here are the oldest in the in the room. You may have had this in school. What did, what did the Romans control at that time? Everything. The Romans controlled the world. The Romans controlled everybody. And you know what? Most people hated them. They didn't come in and say, hey, we're gonna we're going to have an election. Do you want us in power or do you want somebody else? No, they didn't. They came in with their armies. 
and they said, we're taking over. You don't like it, we're going to kill you. And so the Romans were hated. But one Roman governor who tried to, he, he wanted the people to like him. So he rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. He thought, if I rebuild their temple, they're going to like me. Here's the problem. Anytime you build something or anytime you do something, it costs money. you got to pay for it, right? There's nothing free. No such thing as free. If you get something free, that means somebody else had to pay for it. There's no such thing as free. Air is not even free. God had to create air. But, but now when I was young, we had a problem with pollution. People were breathing bad air, dirty air. Air's a lot cleaner now than it used to be. That's cost a lot of money. Love is free. Love is free, and yet love will cost you everything that you have. Love costs everything. But to build a building costs money. Now, this temple was beautiful. It was a beautiful temple. But you see, anytime the government does something like that, they take taxes. It costs you money. So what happened is, anytime that you wanted to go to the temple to worship, you had to pay money. You had to pay a temple tax. Now, how is that any different than when you guys put money in the box? How is that different? It's optional for us. It's optional. We call it offering because it's your choice. If you want to, God bless you. And if you don't, that's okay too. It's your choice. But a tax is not your choice. Trust me, I work for the tax department. I know. I tax your family. Every time you buy something in the store, you pay tax. It's called sales tax. Every time you buy something, you have to pay tax. And when they went to worship in the temple, they had to pay a temple tax. And people hated it. So they thought, wow, we could get Jesus on this one. And they said, tell me, Jesus, you know all things. You're a good man. Now, when, when somebody tries, you know what that's called when people say stuff like that to you? They're trying to butter you up. They're trying to get you in a good mood. They're saying flattering things about you to think, hey, they're my friend. Usually when you hear people saying stuff like that, look out. Because... They're trying to, they're trying to trap you or something like that. So they said, Jesus, you are a righteous man and you know all things. And you truly are a knowledgeable prophet. Tell me, is it lawful to pay tax to Caesar? Ooh. Oh, they got him now. Because if he said yes. People hated that tax. How dare Jesus? How dare he legitimatize that tax? How dare he say it's okay? We hate that tax. And if Jesus says that it's lawful to pay the tax, everybody's going to hate him. But if he says no, it's not lawful, he's going to we get him in trouble with the government because now he's trying to stir up rebellion. See, that's how people work. That's how people work. They think they got you. And I will tell you that when you, talk, when you start to preach the gospel to people, there are some people that are going to try to do stuff like this to you. I've had it happen to me. Funny thing is that Jesus, you know why Jesus was so wise? His dad was God. But even more than that, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And every one of you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And there have been times when I don't know the answer to something, and all of a sudden I hear inside my head, that's 
the answer. And it, it's a brilliant answer. Now, did it come from me? No. I didn't think of it myself. But God, through the Holy Spirit, spoke the answer to me. And Jesus was in constant contact with his Father, that is God. And he said to them, bring me the tax coin. They had a special tax coin that they had to use to pay the temple tax. And he said, bring me the tax coin. William, whose picture is on this quarter? Whose picture is on this? Why am I asking you guys? You're Canadian. Abraham Lincoln. You guys are Canadian. Why would you know that? Abraham Lincoln. Whose picture is on that quarter? George Washington. Abraham Lincoln was on the pennant. You think so? You, you don't even know who George Washington is, do you? You will. You will. Everybody agrees, George Washington. I know. George Washington was one of the founders of our country, and George Washington was our very first president. He was the first president of the United States. Now, in Jesus' day, any coin, well, let me, let me just stop and say, if I had a Canadian coin, whose picture would be on the Canadian coins? It's Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. Every coin has Queen Elizabeth on it. Yeah, no, it's just it's because Queen Elizabeth is queen over the entire Queen's British Canada. Commonwealth. Then they've changed it because I think it used to. I don't think it does. But I, I'll have to go. I'll have to go home and, and look at my. Uh, and then, uh, the, but the quarters and I've got. Bunch of I've got British money. I've got money from uh, from the Bahamas, and they all have the picture of Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, it's an independent country. They all have the picture of Queen Elizabeth on them. The coins that they would have used in Jesus' day would have the picture of the ruler of the Roman Empire, and that ruler of the Roman Empire was called Caesar. Yes, in fact, it was Caesar. at that time. I, no, it wasn't Caesar Augustus anymore. Caesar Augustus was, he was Caesar when Jesus was born, but not at this, not when he was an adult. He had already died. Yeah. But it would have been Caesar. The picture of Caesar would have been on the coin. So Jesus said, show me the coin. And so somebody got the coin and they brought it to him. And he held it up for them and he said, whose picture is on this? And they all said, Caesar's. Here's what Jesus said. Now, they, let me recap. They wanted Jesus to say, hey, the temple tax is lawful so that everybody would hate him, or the temple tax is not lawful so that the government would come and accuse him of stirring up rebellion. He said, whose picture is on this? Whose writing is on this? And they said, Caesar's. He said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Where did he come up with that? Where did he come up with that? God showed him. They weren't done yet. Now, there was another group of people. So we had the Pharisees. We always used to say they called them the Pharisees because they weren't Pharisee. They had another group of people called the Sadducees. We said that they were Sadducees because they were Sadducee. They didn't believe in the they didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed that when you died, that was done. That was done. No more. You died. It's over. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. We got when we die, our soul goes on. Only our bodies die. Our spirit goes back to God because it's the spirit of God in us. But our soul gets judged. It is our soul that either goes to heaven or goes to hell. But the 
Sadducees didn't believe that. So they come up to Jesus and say, Master? Now, why would they call him Master? Butter him up. When people come and say stuff like that to you, watch out. Usually they don't mean it. They didn't really mean that he was the master. They didn't recognize him as their master. But they go, Master, there was a man among us who had a wife, and he died, and they had no children. Now, this is not how we do it nowadays, but this, was, this is how they did it back then. When a man had a wife, and he died, and they had no children, it would be the responsibility of his oldest surviving brother to marry his wife. They were allowed to have more than one. They were allowed to have more than one. And it was his brother's responsibility to have a child with the wife that would be considered his job. So, I'm looking around here and I see mostly girls. So I'm going to have to go here. These are the only brothers that we got in the class. So Eric grows up, gets married, but he dies before he and his wife have children. It would now be William's responsibility to marry Eric's widow and to have children with Eric's wife. And those children would not be considered William's children. Those children would be considered Eric's children. That is how they did things back then. It is not how we do things nowadays. But that is how they do th did things back then. So they came to Jesus and they said, this man had a wife. He died. They had no children. His brother married the wife. But he died, and they didn't have any children. And there were seven brothers, and they all married the woman. But none of them had children with her. And they all died, and finally the woman died. In the resurrection, after life is over and we in heaven, whose wife is she going to be? All seven of them had her as their wives. Now, first of all, that would be a silly question for them to ask because they don't believe in the resurrection anyway. Why would they be asking him something like that if they didn't believe in it themselves? And Jesus said, that's basically what Jesus says. Why are you guys asking me that? You don't. You don't even believe in the resurrection. So obviously you don't understand. You see, Jesus said, in heaven, there is no marriage. There is no marriage. People don't get married. And if they were married on earth, they're not married in heaven. There is no such thing as marriage in heaven. They're like the angels. Now, what, in, what exactly that means, I'm not sure. But I know this much. My dad and my mom were married. My mom died first. After my mom died, my dad remarried. And then my dad died. And the woman that he married would be his second wife. She's still alive, but when she dies, it's not going to be a question of whose husband and whose wife, because she was married before, too, and her husband died. And so that there's no confusion there. Jesus explained, look, there is no such thing as marriage in heaven. We're all going to be like the angels. No, it's actually not. It's really not, because we will know each other so well in heaven. We will know everything about each other. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome.
So now that one. Now here comes a scribe, also also uh, uh, described as a lawyer. Scribes were people that they knew how to write. They wrote good legal documents. So now we got Pharisees, we got Sadducees, we got scribes. which were also known as lawyers, which is not the same as lawyers today. Murder and row is not the way to go. I don't care what number you call. Somebody's been watching too much TV. By the way, that's 877 in Nevada. Here it's what you said. All right. So, now, here's a guy says, okay, Jesus, which commandment is the great? How many commandments are there in the Bible? Twelve, Twelve commandments? Ten. Twelve? Ten commandments. Ten commandments? Ten? Oh, yeah, it's about ten. Ten, ten, ten. Everybody ten. think ten? Ten? Ten commandments. Ten commandments. In the Jewish religion, there were and still are 613 commandments. What? I know. They've got to follow 613 commandments. I can't even remember 613 commandments. I have trouble enough remembering 10. I can remember 10. Who knows, the, who knows any of the 10 commandments? Somebody tell me one of the commandments. Don't murder. Don't murder. Do Don't lie. not murder. Amen. Do not Lie. I don't know. Do, don't be say jealous not, of your neighbor. Do not be yes. jealous. I'm going to say, yeah, no, I'm going to say covet. Don't you want to be no, jealous? Don't. Do not covet. Obey, Respect your dad and mom. Obey your parents. I always hated that commandment. I did too, but I do it. I do it. I break the commandment. Now that I'm a parent, I understand it. Yeah. Do not steal. Oh, you understand it not this way. Now you know how to scrap it. You've already got that. Do not murder. Any others? The one where you don't cheat or something. Oh, don't. I was about to say that. Do not. I'm going to say commit. Adultery. Adultery. Which means you don't take somebody else's husband or wife. Oh, I'm okay with that. Obey God. Uh, they all really are obey God. Anybody? Don't, anybody? Don't make other good. You guys are good. You got six out of the ten already. Don't make other idols. Don't make what? The second one. Don't Say it again. You idols. had it right. Idols. No idols. Yeah. That's already here. Uh, right there. This covet is a little more than just be jealous. Jealous is kind of like, you know, you like something that somebody else has. Covet means you like it so much you'd be willing to go steal it. You want it that bad. No other gods. No, they're different. They're different. Okay, we're down. We have eight more. We've got two more. You guys are good. You guys are really good. What was the last one? There's two more. This would have been the last one right here. This one. And this one would have been number nine. And this one would have been number six. This one would be number five. This would be number eight. This would be number seven. This would be number uh, three, and this is number one. No, this is number two, I'm sorry. So we need numbers three and number four. You guys are so close. You guys are so close. Any other ideas? Any other ideas? Don't take the Lord's name in vain. You helped him. In other words, God's name is to 
to be treated with respect. I'm sure you guys have heard it. I hear it all the time. People just taking, they're just abusing God's name. Yeah, that's that's the biggest one. That's the biggest one. When they say, oh my God, all the time. They don't mean it. They're not actually calling on God. But, uh, like, for example, let's say I would say, oh my crystal. Oh my crystal. Oh my Jennifer. Oh my Jennifer. Oh my Jennifer. If you heard that for a long time, wouldn't that kind of annoy you? Yeah. That's my mother's name. Stop using my mother's name like that. Ugh, oh my to... Ruthie. No. Oh my Ruthie. Put it down. Yeah. Stop you, Dave. Love others. 
Do not commit adultery. Love others. Love. Do not uh, steal. Love others. Uh, do not lie. Love others. Do not covet. Love others. You get the pattern? Jesus did. You see, the commandments are broken down into love God and love each other. Love God and love each other. So when he's, when they said, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, the greatest commandment of all is you will love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second commandment is like the first, to love others the same way you love yourself. It's right there before you. <clears throat> I'm going to stop there, and I want to put that to you. The Jewish people back then, and still do today, have to memorize 613 commandments and they have to obey every one of them. Then they have to do some sort of uh, penance, I guess. I don't. I really don't know. I don't know how they handle that. But they are supposed to obey 613 commandments. We could say that we're supposed to obey 10 commandments, but you guys were only able to come up with eight of them. And you guys did much better than most people. Most people could hardly come up with two or three. But Jesus only gave us two commandments. And these are the two commandments that I want you to remember. Commandment number one, love God. Commandment number two, love each other. Commandment number one, love God. Commandment number two, love each other. If you steal, is that loving each other? No. If you take God's name in vain, is that loving God? No. If you have other idols, is that loving God? No. If you have other gods, is that loving God? No. You know what some of the people's biggest gods are? That Money. Yeah, this is the Money. biggest God that they serve. This is the biggest God that they serve. Money. Money. You have to watch your eyes for me. I'm going to do everything I can and spend all of my time and all of my effort money. earning money. I'm going to spend all of my time and all of my effort serving God. Loving God. And here's the thing. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the things that you need He's going to add to you. He's going to give you what you need. All right, everybody. Commandment number one. Love God. Commandment number two. Love others. Now, if you do anything that is not showing love to God or that is not showing love to others, then you are not obeying God. You are breaking the commandments. All right? Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Father, let those two commandments burn in our hearts. Love God and love others. That everything that we do would be to love you and to love each other. Now, Lord, I know that there are some people who are going to come up and they're going to try to test us like they tested Jesus. And I ask you that you would speak to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts that we might have a right answer for them, that we might have a righteous answer for them. Lord, that we would be able to see those who are trying to mock us and give us the right answers to avoid it. And Lord, those that are just that are wanting to know you more and asking questions because of that, I ask you to help us to find the right answers to lead people to you. But most of all, Lord, let us to love you 
and to love each other. In all things, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.